Okay, chapter three is all about quadratic functions. We did linear functions in chapter two. Chapter three is going to be similar stuff, but looking at it from a quadratic point of view. Uh, so quadratic equations, basic concept, basic functions, what is the vertex, what does the function tell you, uh, square to find the vertex, find the vertex by hand, find the graph of the quadratic, solve applications that model quadratic behavior, and then we are going to do quadratic regression, which is similar to linear regression, but the shape of the graph is quadratic, all right, and the points come out in a quadratic fashion. Okay, so it's all about quadratics in chapter three, which quadratics are very important functions. They show up a lot. Uh, so again, this is all about quadratics. So what a quadratic is, all right, so suppose a, b, and c are constants, meaning they're real number values, where a can't be zero, but b or c could. The function that basically has a square term in it, all right, that's what the, the a can't be zero, because I have to have a square term in my function. Um, or a single x term with a constant term paired with the square term. Right? That's what makes it a quadratic. So the three different types would be the, the general type where I've got the square term, the x term, and the constant term. So that's the f of x here. The g of x is when I have a square term and a constant term. And then the h of x is when it's just a square term. All of those are quadratics. Right? All of those are quadratic types. A quadratic function is always a parabola shape. So a parabola shape is like a U shape that either opens up or opens down. And actually, you can look at the function to tell if it opens up or opens down. That term on the square, all right, whatever the term is on the square, we consider that the leading coefficient, so the term on the square is the leading coefficient. And if A is positive, so if A is greater than 0, it opens up. If A is negative, A is less than 0, it's a parabola that opens down, which is important to know. All right, we'll get to applications where we want to find maxes and mins. Well, maxes and mins occur at the vertex. All right, the vertex is either the highest point or the lowest point. All right, highest point or the lowest point. And so, if it's a parabola that opens up, this would be a minimum vertex. If a parabola opens down, this would be a maximum vertex. So that's why the vertex is important. That's why we're going to find it. As we want to maximize things, right? A lot of times we want to optimize things. I want to find the maximum area. I want to find the minimum cost, maximum profit, minimum population size, right? And so we're looking for max and mins a lot. And so when it's a parabola case, those occur at your, your, your vertex, verte vertices, right? Where your vertex is. So that's why we're going to have to find the vertex. And then we also want to know where things are increasing or decreasing. And so if it's a minimum case, Right, it decreases down to the minimum and then increases after that minimum. It's the opposite when it's the maximum case, opens down. It increases first up to the max and then decreases after the max. And again, that's important. We're going to be answering questions where we want to know where things are uh, increasing and decreasing. What's interesting about parabolas is they are symmetrical. Right? There's this line that passes through the vertex called the axis of symmetry. And so it's this line, if I go through the vertex, uh, symmetry means if I fold it over, or at least in this case, if I fold it over, it's the exact same shape on the other side. All right, and that's true for both of those. If I take the axis that goes through my vertex, right, and I fold it over, the lines or the parabola shape on both sides are identical, right, on opposite sides of the vertice. All right, so just kind of a summary of that here. So if A opens up, the square term has a positive number in front of it, it opens up, the vertex is the lowest moment, the line going through the vertex is the axis of symmetry, I mean if I fold my function over that line, it's the same shape on both sides of the line. The vertex then is the lowest point, I decrease down to the lowest point, so in this particular shape I'm decreasing from negative infinity to that x value 1, and then on the other side I'm increasing, right? From 1 to infinity, I'm increasing, All right, decreasing down to the vertex, and again, it would be my minimum in that case. If my square term is negative, right, I'm opening down, which means the vertex is a maximum. My axis of symmetry goes through. In this case, the axis of symmetry actually is the, the y-axis, right? That's the line x equals 0. If I fold it over the y-axis, I have the same shape on both sides. 
it's decreasing or increasing we'll do increasing first increasing on the side up to it so from negative infinity to that axis of symmetry it's increasing and then it's decreasing on the other side zero to infinity all right so again the vertex is where it switches right i'm switching from increasing to decreasing and vice versa depending on if i'm opening up or opening down which again is important information i want to know when profit's increasing i want to know when cost is decreasing I want to know what my maximum population would be. I want to know what my minimum area would be, and so on. All right, so the leading coefficient is very important. It tells us when it opens up and opens down. That leading, that, that leading coefficient is whatever is on the square term. All right, that's what the leading coefficient is. All right, the leading coefficient is the square term. So that A value, not only does the A value tell you if it opens up and opens down, the shape of the graph, in that results, it also can tell you whether your graph is going to be a skinny parabola or a wide parabola. Narrow or wide is kind of what the terms that we use. If my A values are narrow or big, means I'm multiplying by big numbers, like I'm multiplying by 2, 4, 5, 10. If I'm multiplying, my function's growing faster, right? And so it should make sense, it's a skinnier parabola. It's narrower if my a values are big. That's what this means. My A values are big. It's narrower. If my A values are small, and what we usually mean by small is that it usually means their fractions are decimals, like 1 half, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, something like that. And so what happens when my values are smaller, and they, they could be positive or negative, it's true whether they're positive or negative, that's why they use the absolute value, because it's the same whether they're positive or they're negative. It means if you sort of think about it, is I'm almost dividing by a number, right? Instead of multiplying by a number. And so I'm growing slower. And so it's a fatter parabola. It's a wider parabola. And there's some examples here that are graphed both in the negative and positive direction. Uh, so again, the green one is the 2 times x squared, which again is the skinniest one. It means it's growing the fastest. The blue one is there's only a 1 on my x squared, and so it's in the middle, right? It's a, a smaller growth than my 2 because I, it's only a 1. 1 is smaller than 2. And then if I look at the red one, it's the fraction 1 half. Right? I'm multiplying by a small number. And again, another way you can think about it is I'm taking all my square terms and dividing them by 2, dividing by 2, which makes them smaller. So it's going to grow slower. slower. And so whenever I've got a, a fraction out front of my square term like this, it's going to be a wider function. Same thing's true even if they're negative. Right, and so we use the 3 in case here. So again, the negative 3 is a bigger, the biggest number here, and it's the skinniest graph. It's the green one. Then the negative 1 is the next skinniest graph because it's the middle value. And then negative 1 third, you can think about it again, is, is I'm multiplying by a third, I'm dividing by 3. It's the wider graph because it's growing slower. All right. So again, that leading coefficient not only tells me up or down, max and mids. If it's a big number, I'm growing fast, so I'm a skinny parabola. If it's a fraction, think about it that way, or a smaller number, I'm growing less fast, and it's wider, all right? It's fatter. All right, so a couple of examples just kind of tell you, just looking at the functions, all right, determine what's happening based on just what you understand about the, the square terms. So my first function, and then we'll graph them and, and, and check it out. All right, so my first function is 5x squared plus 2. My second function is 1 fourth x squared plus 1. All right, so both of them have a positive a value, which means they both open up. And so that means the vertex, right, if they open up, the vertex is a minimum. Once we were able to find it, uh, that's what the vertex is. It would be a minimum, which means I would decrease down to it, increase after it. All right, then which one's narrower and which one's wider? All right, so remember, narrower means growing faster. That's what narrower means. Narrower means it's skinnier, so it's growing faster. Wider means it's fatter and growing slower, slowly going out to infinity. 
And so that's the best way to think about it. And so the f function is narrower. It's growing faster. The g of x is the wider function. It grows slower. And if you graph them, you'll see that. So I'm going to go to my calculator and graph them. I believe a standard window should work just fine. So I'm going to type in my functions. 5x squared plus 2. And then my second function will be 1 for x squared, I believe it's also a plus 2, let me double check, yeah. Alright, then make sure I'm a standard window and I am, so I'm going to go ahead and grab it. So there's the first function, there's the, and so again, the first function, which was my f of x, is much skinnier than my second function, which was the, the g of x, right? So we grew a lot faster when we multiplied by 5 than when we did when we multiplied by a fourth or divided by 4, if you think about it that way. All right, next example, and they both opened up. All right, come on. Don't freeze on me. There we go. Alright, well the second example, we'll just have to write it out since my program looks to be frozen on me here. Okay, so the second example, oh there we go, finally unfroze. Okay, the second example was f of x was negative 0.2x squared, g of x was negative 4x. So first of all, both of my leading terms are negative. Alright, so a is negative, which means it both in both. So both open down, right, which means they have this shape. And so that means the vertex, when we can find it, is a maximum value, right? This would be a maximum. It means I increase up to it, max out, decrease after it. All right, then f of x is negative 0.2, which 0.2 is a fraction, right? it's the fraction one-fifth. Right? It's making my x value smaller, right, because decimal makes things smaller. And then 4 is a bigger number, and so that means this time f of x should be the wider case. It grows or declines, I guess you say declines since we're moving down slower as I'm going downward, right? G of x has the bigger number this time, so it's the narrower, and so it means it declines faster, right? And again, I'll leave you to that to the graph. The graph will verify that if you do graph them both out, um, you will see that the g of x will be the skinny one, that's the g of x, and then the f of x will be the wider one. All right, if you do graph that out. And I'll leave you to do that since I did the example in the previous one. My right, standard window should work just fine if you try it out in a standard window. All right, we'll stop there. I'll pick up the next set of notes in the next video.